Okay, let's take a look at this problem where we're asked to compute material and price variances. Now I'll read the problem which appears right up here, okay? So right up there, reading that it says, Marvel Parts Inc. manufactures auto accessories. One of the company's products is a set of seat covers that can be adjusted to fit nearly any small car. The company has a standard cost system in use for all of its products. According to the standards that have been set up for the seat covers, the factory should work 2,850 hours each month to produce 1,900 sets of covers. The standard costs associated with this level of production are, and then they give you this information here. So we have, we have the total direct material cost, uh, the cost per set of covers, the total labor costs, and the variable manufacturing overhead, and it's determined based on direct labor hours, okay? All right, during August, the factory worked only 2,800 direct labor hours and produced 2,000 set of covers. The following actual costs were recorded during the month. So it looks like we had 12,000 yards of material uh, were recorded. Direct labor was 18,200. The 12,000 yards came out to be $22.80 cost per set for a total cost of 45,600. And variable manufacturing overhead was um, seven seven thousand dollars, which comes to three fifty per set of covers. Okay, it's standard. Each set of covers should require five point six yards of material. All the materials purchased during the month were used in production. Now, down here is the answer of how we would compute the material price variance um, and the material quantity variance. Okay, and I just realized my, my title should say computing material price and material quantity variance variances, so I've changed that. All right, so how did, how did we calculate that? How did we come up with the 2400 and the 3200? Well, if we want to use the direct approach, we know that the material price variance is equal to the actual quantity times the difference between the actual price and the standard price right so what do we know we know that 12,000 yards were incurred and it was recorded in the system so what this means is that's the the, the dollar amount that they purchased 12,000 yards and um, it was actually incurred at 380 per yard versus the four dollar per yard standard and that comes up to be twenty four hundred dollars favorable okay now let's explain where the four dollars standard price came from we know that it's standard we expected to incur a total material cost of $22.40, given here, and they told you that it should take five, what is this, 5.6 yards. For each product. And the 5.6 is given here. Each set of covers is 5.6. So if I take 2240 and divide it by 5.6, I come up with the standard of $4 per yard. Okay, next let's figure out how we came up with 380. Right here, we take 45,600, the total purchased cost of the materials we bought, and we divide it by 12,000 12, yards, which is how many, you know, what the quantity was of the yards we purchased. Okay, the yards of the material. If we divide that, 45.6 divided by 12,000 yards, we get 380. So that was our actual cost. So 12,000, you know, back to our initial work here, we've got 12,000 yards times 20 cents 380 less four dollars 20 cents gives us a favorable variance of twenty four hundred dollars 
Okay, next, let's explore how we come up with the 3200 unfavorable of material quantity variance. Well, if we want to use the direct approach, we can say material quantity variance is equal to the standard price times the difference between the actual quantity and the standard quantity. The standard price is $4. We've already calculated that, right, by taking 2240 divided by 5.6 yards. And then we have to multiply it times the 12,000 yards that we actually purchased verse, versus the 11,200 we were expected to purchase. Well, how do we come up with that 11,200? Well, it's the standard quantity allowed for the output at standard price. Um, 2,000 sets were produced. 2,000 sets at 560 yards per set would have, would have told us that we had to use 11,200 yards. So that's where it came up, came up with. So 11,002 versus the 12,000 yards we actually you know, purchased and, and used in production. We've got no difference between purchased and in, uh, and used in this situation. Gives us um, 800 yards difference, and the 800 yards times $4 gives us 3,200 unfavorable. Okay, now that's how you work it through what I, using the approach down here, which I call the direct approach. Now you may find it easier using the three-column approach, where you take actual quantity and actual price on the left side, then use standard quantity and standard price on the right side. You can compute the total variance, you know, the total material spending variance, and then break it into the price and quantity variance. Remember that the price is essentially the actual quantity times the actual price minus the standard price. But if we, actually, if we do it the full multipl multiplicative way, we take actual quantity times actual price, and then compare that to the actual quantity times standard price, what happens is the actual quantity falls out in both cases. We wind up with actual quantity um, times the difference between the prices. But you can do it this way, and it might make more sense to you to, to do it this way. The actual price, the actual quantity of input at the standard price would be 12,000 yards times the standard price of $4. Gives us this interim middle period of 48,000. 48 versus the 45.8 gives, gives us the 2,400 favorable variance, the same way we calculated it here. Well, now that we have a middle ground equal to 48,000, we can compare that to the standard quantity allowed times the standard price. Um, and that was 11,200 times $4, the same way we, uh, uh, we came up with the 11,200 here, right? But once we multiply it times the, the, uh, the standard price, we get 44,8. And 44,8 versus 48,000, uh, winds up with an unfavorable variance. Anytime the numbers to the left are greater than the numbers to the right, it's unfavorable. If the numbers to the right are greater than the numbers to the left, like we have here, it's favorable. So that's two different ways you can approach this problem, but um, that essentially is how you would compute the material price and material quantity variance for this problem.